You might think that you know what's going on with the recent downgrades, but do you really know the full truth behind these ratings? That the credit rating agencies themselves who are supposed to be unbiased are actually helping prop up a failing system through self-serving ratings? And most importantly, what happens to you when it all comes crashing down? Hi everyone, I'm Taylor Kenny with ITM Trading, and today we're going to be exposing the truth of the big three credit rating agencies and how it is impossible for them to be as objective as they need to be due to blatant self-interest. We're going to break down what we're seeing on the surface with the downgrades and then what's really happening behind the scenes, and most importantly, how that could impact you. There are three big credit rating agencies, the big three, Moody's, S&P, and Fitch. These three account for 95% of all ratings that are determined. So this is everything from on an individual level when we're talking about banks, as well as the operating environment that they're operating in. And you can imagine why it's pivotal that these rating agencies maintain um, truth and honesty in their ratings because it impacts everything. These credit rating agencies are supposed to provide objective information, objective ratings. That way, the borrower and the lender, all of the players understand what risk they're taking on. This helps everyone make sound decisions and in theory, should help the economy maintain stability. The problem is, how can we trust these rating agencies to maintain a truthful and honest rating if it's in their own best interest to keep these ratings high. As a quick reminder, these companies are all private, which means that they have shareholders, and their biggest shareholders are banks and investment companies. And for those of you who don't know, they operate with an issuer pay business model, which means that they allow those issuing the bonds to pay the rating agencies directly for their ratings. Now, let me ask you, would you be incentivized to give out a higher rating if you're being paid for it, if that's your client? And especially if that client could tell you, well, I'm going to go down the street to a different rating agency because I'm going to rating shop around and find someone who's going to give me a higher rating if you won't. I'll take my business elsewhere. It doesn't take a genius to say it. This is a broken system. On top of that, these private agencies are entrenched in regulation, regulation that impacts all of us. You can't regulate and make a profit off of it. When your regulations result in you making more profits, we have a problem. Again, a huge conflict of interest. Okay, so let me pause real quick because I'm sure you're wondering, well, that's all fine, there's a conflict of interest, but how could they possibly be rating higher if it's obvious they shouldn't be? Don't they have parameters that they need to stay within? Isn't there some kind of metric or guide or matrix that they need to be using? And the answer is no. A lot of it is judgment-based and the parameters themselves that do exist are constantly being tweaked and changed. How can you play a game that's fair if the rules are changing while you're playing the game? And if these credit rating agencies fail or misstep or misjudge, guess who pays for it? You and I. But they are actually built into the system, so they are protected. If you're part of the regulatory framework, you can have the framework be wrong. You can have the framework have misjudged or misgraded a rating, but you're not really gonna have the framework fail. Let's bring it back to what's happening right now. In the last month alone, we have seen downgrades from all three of these rating agencies in different areas. Kicking it off was Fitch downgrading US debt, then Moody's downgrading 10 individual banks and putting six more on notice, and now notably this week, S&P downgrading more banks and putting more on notice. And you might be thinking, wait a second, Taylor, you just said it was in their interest to keep these ratings high. So why are they downgrading all of these ratings? And that's it exactly. The fact that they are downgrading these ratings is highly concerning. What these downgrades are telling us is that things are actually probably much worse than they seem. I can't say how it's going to go, but what I can say is that it's happened before. We saw this in 2008 with the mortgage-backed securities that the big three overrated, they were favorably rated when in reality, they were junk. So knowing all of that, why are the downgrades happening now? Since the Great Recession, 
they have to find a balance. While yes, they are protected and hardwired into the system, they still need people to have faith in their ratings. S&P's reasoning this week for the downgrades was higher funding costs and troubles in the commercial real estate sector that would likely test the credit lenders. Let's break that down together, starting with the higher funding costs. Banks always hold a percentage of their assets in investment securities, the top two securities being mortgage-backed or U.S. Treasury. During the last couple of years, specifically 2020 and 2021, banks started massively buying U.S. Treasury securities, long-term bonds, which was great at the time. It was a seemingly safe, sound, long-term investment. But as the Federal Reserve has continued to increase interest rates, the fixed rates on those bonds actually go down, so it diminishes in value. This results in a loss of assets or a loss of tangible equity for the banks. Whenever this happens, banks face real funding issues. Maybe they can't get advances, their existing loans aren't renewed, or they have to sell their assets at a fraction of the cost at a loss. These are all really serious concerns. Just earlier this year, we witnessed the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank after they were forced to sell off their long-term investments, their long-term bonds, at a significant loss. This turned into a capital crisis that resulted in a 48-hour bank run and total financial failure, and we're still seeing some of those ripple effects today. Following Silicon Valley Bank's collapse, people have been scared, rightfully so, to leave their money in their banks. So they're actually hurting small banks by taking out their money and putting in too big to fail banks. But there's no guarantee with those banks that they aren't going to fail. And imagine what happens when one bank fails. Now we have multiple banks failing. What happens then? But we're jumping ahead of ourselves. What's concerning right now are the downgrades. It started with one, then another, multiple agencies, multiple types of downgrades, and they're warning that more are coming. The ratings in simple terms are the creditworthiness of the government entity or the bank or whatever it might be and their ability to pay back that debt and the interest accrued on it. These ratings go from AAA up at the top down to D at the bottom. And in between, there are tiers and there are pluses and minuses as well as numbers. So up at the top, right, we have the AAA, we have the A's. Within that, let's say you have a AA plus, a AA, and a AA minus for S&P. Moody's equivalent would be a AA1, AA2, and AA3. So within each tier, there are different breakouts of ratings There are really two categories that we're talking about right now, and that is investment grade or speculative. Triple B and up is investment grade. Anything below is speculative, or maybe you've heard it referred to as high yield or junk. Low rating means high risk. And when we talk about downgrades and ratings, again, there are different things that can be rated. So when Fitch downgraded the U.S. debt, they downgraded the operating environment that the banks were in from a double A to a double A minus. That did not prompt a reevaluation of banks. But if the United States were to lose its double A status, it actually would trigger a reevaluation of 70 or more big banks. Because if you think about it, a bank, it's going to be difficult to say that they automatically have a certain high level rating when the environment that they're in and the outside pressures are lower. As it stands today, there are many banks that are in serious jeopardy of being downgrading and losing their current standing. This tells us a couple of things. The fact that these agencies are downgrading, we don't have an honest assessment of what the creditworthiness is of these institutions. So if they're downgrading, that tells me that it's really bad. Now, the reason this is so concerning is because if these downgrades continue to happen and the ratings are not accurate, which then we know that things are going to happen and they're going to happen fast. Many pension funds or mutual funds are only permitted to hold investment grade. So if things were investment grade and they suddenly drop to junk, what's going to happen? Those assets are going to have to be sold at a fraction of the cost. And this fast, intense, low selling at a high volume creates a whirlpool and that's just going to keep feeding on itself. The forced selling here is massive and it results in even steeper price declines. 
This can happen on a company level, an individual level. Talking about banks again, I gave that example of Silicon Valley Bank earlier. Now imagine if that happened to 70 banks, if that happened to all of these corporations, you are going to be left holding the bag at the end of the day. The first step here, as always, to protecting yourself is understanding not just what's going on in the surface, but what's happening behind the scenes. Because if you have all of the information, you can make educated decisions for yourself. Ultimately, who stands to benefit from these ratings? If rating agencies stand to benefit from keeping them high and they're lowering them, that should tell you something about what's really going on behind the scenes and how bad things are. Make sure that you're not caught unaware with your wealth and your assets tied up in a system that is clearly broken. Click the link below to get a strategy in place today. And if you found this helpful, make sure to share it with your friends and your family. Because again, the more of us that understand what's going on, the stronger we all are together. As always, thank you for joining me today and taking on credit rating agencies and exposing the truth behind what's going on. I am Taylor Kenny with ITM Trading. Until next time.